Okay, my name is Chalaktin. We say Chalaktin Kui in Shna, means Chalaktin is my name. That's my real name. But I grew up with the name Rick Harry, and I'm based here in a village called Chamaltzin, which we now call Capilano, here in North Vancouver and West Vancouver. And the, um, I was raised in Squamish, in Upper Squamish area, but although we say this area here is also Squamish because we're going by language. Well, we put up our hands for, you know, like Bill Reed and Bill Holmes. Those people are to help bring out the native art in the world stage, right? And without all, all that, we wouldn't have been moving where we are now. So we put our hands up to them. But now with all that, people start looking at us. If we were Haida or if we were Nishka or Quag Youth or Heltzik, you know, we name it uh, all Northern style. But really what's happening here is now Coast Salish. And, you know, we've been here a long time. A lot of our art disappeared, you know, because we're closest to the to the big city, right? So a lot of things were burnt or whatever. So it was more difficult for us to find those pieces for us. But, you know, to me, I felt, well, I'll just let it happen. Maybe things will come out. And if they believe it comes through me, it'll come back, right? And uh, so that's what I'm doing as a Coast Salish artist, pushing that a little more and uh, seeing it, what's ha where it's from on this land here. Well, as I was growing up, mentoring wasn't a word that we used. I mean, so my brother probably mentored me by looking, just watching him draw, right? But uh, for me, as a full-time artist now, I mentored a lot of people, which I do is I show them some processes and how to come up with ideas, sketching, and just uh, learning some lines and form lines and and just leave the book open for them. Just experiment and just let it happen. And if they need technical support, I'll help them out with that. And that's basically what I probably needed in my early life. But I learned a lot by just trial and error, and that's what I believe I did. Well, I say that, you know, traditional art is uh, it's what's happening because, you know, I'm alive, I'm still a traditional person. So whether if the designs change or not is it's still traditional to me because I am who I am. I am Salish, I am Quagius, and I am who I am as an artist. You know, if we think about tradition, if we stuck only to tradition, we'd still be painting in the caves, rock paves. So, you know, everything is evolves, you know, and, and there's a lot of intermarriages going on. So we got Salish, Quagius, Salish, Haida, you, you name it, you know. So what I do is, I tie them together, so to me, they're still real, traditional. That's what's happening. I just like uh, focusing the artwork, keeping it alive, and help pass on messages, and look at uh, coming together more. Because you know, like we're taught as if we were in a canoe. If we're all in this one canoe, we got to pull together as one, and we got to pull and work and pull our own weight, right? So if we think about that in the world stage that, you know, our vessel is the Mother Earth. We have to look at Mother Earth, look after it, it'll look after us. And that'll take us on our life journey, right? So I think uh, it's important that we get simple messages out there to, to carry on for our next generations ahead of us, right? So, uh, and artwork's a good way of just being a able to open up and chat openly about work and about messages. Uh, my name is James Harry. Um, I like to carve. I like to integrate it with metal, do a little bit of a contemporary mix with it. Um, but my style, I like to say, is Coast Salish, which um, uh, I'm coming from the Squamish Nation. So we have a specific style that um, uses uh, design elements that are a little different than uh, what you'd say would be more northern art, art style. I get my ideas from uh, a lot of it comes from my dad's artwork and he's been doing it for his whole life so uh, which is Coast Salish style artwork which is ovoid shapes, um, crescents and wedge shapes um, and you try and use those shapes in a way that can make up a bigger picture of whatever it is that you're creating whether it's an eagle or a bear or a salmon you just have to keep those shapes in mind the YVR Arts Foundation um, puts out submissions every year for 
uh, artists who receive a scholarship award to up to five thousand dollars to create a piece of artwork over a span of a year um, and six it's six BC First Nations artists that are chosen um, and you have a ch you have two chances to apply uh, and win the award um, and it's really great because it's not only good uh, publicity uh, worldwide because they put it in the international airport um, they connect you with uh, CBC um, so it's really great for upcoming First Nations artists to uh, um, to partake in it and really make sure they extend out and uh, try try for it because th there are um, I guess you could say there's not as many First Nations artists out there and it's uh, it's, it's good to have more of the culture, and especially with upcoming generations, that we keep it alive and keep it moving and pushing it forward. For the interweavings exhibition, I, um, I had offered uh, a previous piece that I had worked on, which was for the YVR Scholarship Award, uh, which was a six-foot aluminum totem pole that um, essentially started out as a, se uh, a sheet and um, had a water jet cut, so it was all computerized at first. And then uh, the water jet cut out the designs that I had drawn, transferred onto the computer, and then it was then rolled into a cylinder shape. And then uh, after that, I would at I attached LED lighting on the inside and a plastic sheet to kind of distort the view behind. So it kind of projected the designs through these um, iconic figures, uh, which were represented, which was the Thunderbird, the bear, and the salmon, uh, to represent from sea to sky. On the top is a Thunderbird. On the bottom is a salmon, and in the middle is a bear. Uh, and together they kind of tell the story. Um, uh, with the salmon, it's, it represents discipline, uh, determination. It's also a provider of life for all the other animals, whether it's an e eagles or bears. Almost everything uh, relies on the salmon as a food source. So it's like it's, and it also represents life. The bear. Um, was like a brother to the First Nations you know, people. You know, we we looked up to the bear because it knew the land, it knew which berries to eat, um, and it knew how to fish too. So, you know, we learned from the bear, and we considered it like our brother. Uh, also, it, the bear symbolizes family and strength. And on the top is a thunderbird, um, and the thunderbird was known because it's usually depicted on the top. Uh, of totem poles, um, and they and it would. There's stories. Every every tribe has different a different story for the Thunderbird, but uh, it would fly and it would create thunder under its wings. It was a mythical being uh, that people that our people looked up to. Um, it could also transform itself to. Uh, it also represented uh, protocol and carrying out of law and. So that's also why it's depicted on the top. Hi, <laughs> my name is Morgan Green. I am a Simshian artist. I'm based out of Vancouver, BC, but I'm from Northern BC, from Lac Lambs. And I do many different types of art. I started with textiles, painting and drawing, and I have moved on to wood carving and goldsmithing. I also do stone cutting and gem setting. <laughs> so a lot of my pieces are crest based. Um, our, our whole society, Northwest Coast society, pre-contact is a complex society full of laws, stories. And they're not just stories, they actually represent the histories of our migration and our marriages and our lineage and our matrilineal society. Um, so when you create something with a specific crest for a specific person, it's, it's very important that it be correct and that it matches up with the stories that that person owns and say the dances that they may own um, so that when they're using it during feast or during cultural events, it's actually telling their story to other people and it's recognizable. You're able to know who's part of your family based on crest. You're able to know where people come from and um, what their rank is in society. Um, so it it's really tells the story of our law as well as our personal stories 
and you can kind of mix both in together. Like beyond a person's family crest, there's personal stories that they might have that would be added into that piece as well. So uh, the butterfly and the sun piece that I have uh, created and included in this exhibit, I, it's an interesting piece because it was actually inspired by our language, which is Somaliac, which means the true language. It's the language of the Simshian people. And the word for butterfly in Somaliac actually means made of the sun or made of light. And I really liked that idea because butterflies are very much a day creature and a sun creature. They like to come out when the flowers are out. They like to flutter around in the sky and the trees. Um, so I really played with that idea with this. I used gold to represent the sun and the light. And I used gold also in the body of the butterfly because it's sort of made of the sun and also I made very fluttery wings, I made layers. Um, I really wanted to give that illusion of it actually moving. That piece, um, it's really a mix of ideas. I think it really showcases the master-apprentice relationship because it's really, at first glance, looks nothing like either Rick or Gerald's work. Um, and that's because Rick, what he really taught me was um, not to be the same as him, but how to think creatively and out of the box. And his, that's the main thing that he taught me was about my mind. And when he talks about things, he talks about them in a psychological way, not just a physical way. So it really taught me to psychologically get into the designs and um, to really play a bit more freely with things and not be afraid to experiment. Whereas a lot of uh, mentors, that I've tried to work with have maybe been more restrictive and saying, oh, you can't do that or you can't do this. And um, Rick's always just interested in my ideas and says, well, maybe you can't do it that way, but how can we make it work? You know, And um, just helping me to think creatively. I think for me, probably the thing I'm most proud of is my technical skills. So I think as an adult, you, you're able to look at the pieces a little more in depth. And I would just say, don't just look at it from one angle. Um, look underneath it, look behind it, because I put a lot of effort into every single part of it and not just the front that you see. So take a look, try and see the layers, try and guess how I put it together. That's the fun part. 